<laughs> the dean of the dirty south sound say that fast three times uh make sure you get in the chat room it's time to roll this week in pinsado's place Seen episodes i finally got herb to to to, to flinch Got 14 more, proud. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. That was too much. That was too much effort, man. Hey, everybody, welcome to the, this week's in Pensada's place. This is episode number 4,321. No, wait a minute, number 14. Mm. Uh, episode number 14. Uh, I can't believe it. Uh, you guys have been so kind to us to uh, care what we have to say and think for the last 14 weeks. Did you ever think we'd make it this far, Herb? About 10. And then we'd be out. <laughs> so thanks, everybody else, because it's clearly not because of us. <laughs> after, after my conversation with you after the first episode, I thought that might have been it. That might have been the, the yeah. inaugural and the climax all at one yeah. time. Nobody loves me more than Herb Trowick, but Herb was uh, pretty clear about letting me know that I pretty much sucked at this. <laughs> oh, no. oh, <laughs> we, did, we did have some interesting practice yeah. sessions in the kitchen. Right. Address all your letters and emails to Herb Trowick at BiteMe.com. Right. <laughs> Man, uh, uh, do we have any housekeeping or can I, can I talk to my buddy Mike? Uh, we have a little housekeeping. Okay, so go ahead. Want to get that out of the way first? Yeah, let's do that. All right, you guys know the drill. Um, you want to get to us at uh, our Twitter handle, at Pensados place, our email, which you see stuff up on the screen, denoting all that, which is Pensado Place at ThisWeekend.com, our Facebook page, YouTube, um, as usual, get in the chat room, manned by our man Drew Adams. Drew, what's happening? What's going on, everybody? You good? Hit me up in the chat room. Uh -huh. Got a lot to talk about today. All right. And did you want to, you had a comment about his fashion today, Drew's. <laughs> uh, man, after Kobe's problems, I'm letting that one slide. Gotcha. <laughs> Thanks, Kobe. I got kicked off the gear slides for saying that. You know, gotcha. Yeah. Uh, we, will, yeah. we will avoid that, and uh, get glad we went into overtime and won, but that's a, that's a Laker thing. Yeah. Anyways, um, <laughs> thanks a lot for your comments. Uh, we got a, great, a lot of great stuff last week. And, and actually, let me just on a personal note, I tried to respond to a few guys who said happy birthday and belated happy birthday, but I didn't get back to you. So I'm saying it to you now. Thank you for all that stuff. So, again, we've got a really interesting guest that Dave will introduce, the Dean of the Dirty South South. Oh, man, I'm, I'm so excited about Mike. Mike and I go way back. Uh, we're both guitar players. We're, we're, we uh, both worked at the same room at Enterprise. Mike has gone on to some great, great things. I'm so, so happy for his success because nobody has, has worked harder at getting uh, from from Houston, Texas to the big time like, like Mike Dean has. Mike, welcome to the show, welcome, my friend. What's up? Hey, hey, guys, good to see you. Good, good to see you, Mr. Pensado. I still can't get over the no hair look, Mike. What happened to us? I, we both had long hair last well, time we uh, spoke. Well, I guess we grew up. I don't know. <laughs> became adults. Huh? Well, there's certain, there's certain, in quote, childhood things that we still both do, you know, from time to time. We didn't grow up. We just... <laughs> I think my hair was getting too thin to have it long. So, so with shorter hair, you, your high end is your your high yeah. frequency response is better because you're not muffled anymore. I right? Got rid of the diffuser. Yeah. I, I always remember when I had long hair in, in the '70s. People used to say, "Doesn't that get hot in the summertime?" But nobody ever asked me if it was cool in the winter. I mean, it was warm in the winter. Warm in the winter. But anyway, <laughs> man. Uh, Thanks for taking time. I know that uh, anybody that's alive knows that uh, that you have your hands full with uh, Kanye West, Mr. West. You uh, you you've been engineering for him. You've been co-producing. You've been mastering his records. You you're emptying his new show. Yeah. You're playing in the show, uh, writing. Um, you're still doing like housework and housekeeping too, right? At the New York house, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I still do the toilets. So, you know, Did I leave anything sink. out, Mike? My gosh. No, that's it, I think. Man. Got a lot of hats, you know. But, but I tell you what, um, I, I always thought that, that uh, like in the, on the first Prince record, when, you, when one person does so many things, it can add a one-dimensional quality. But yeah. how do you avoid that? I mean, you, you, your records sound like this, like, like, like literally uh, five different people not not like I we were talking to Ed Cherney last week and he said he hates to mix his own tracks but 
but mm-hmm. but you 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 make it all one process uh, essentially. Yeah. You don't really try to just you don't try to delineate the different parts of the creative process that are all one extension of the other, right? Everything kind of connects to me, you know. I just start engineering out of necessity from engineers not being attentive enough, you know. Yeah, or good mm-hmm. enough, you can say it. Yeah, just, you know, things but start doing that back too, in you, Mexican you, band days. More so than anybody I've ever known. Um, check this out, Herb. There's some engineers that try not to sound like something. They don't want to sound pop. They don't want to sound too urban. They don't want to sound too black. They, 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 they've made a career trying not to sound like something. Then there's another group of engineers that try to sound like something. They want to sound pop. They want to sound true the streets. They want to sound dark. They want to sound this. Mike Dean is one of my favorite engineers, and I, 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 to this day I reference some of Mike Dean's mixes because of this. He, he just tries to be creative. He, he has, Mike has, Mike, of all, all the engineers I know, he has the least amount of boundaries and walls. And why am I talking when Mike's the guest? He should be talking. I was going to be right there. <laughs> <laughs> but man, those, those old Scarface records you did, uh, I yeah. shouldn't say old because they're timeless. They're, they're those were great records. Oh, man. How's he doing, by the way? He's doing good. Yeah, give him my yeah. love, man. That's one yeah. of the coolest guys that... Uh, that I've ever worked with. I really like him. Seen him in a few months. You know, I've been on the road with Kanye. Yeah. Uh, man, there's so many things I can jump around. We'll come back to the Kanye thing. Back, uh, back when you got your start in Texas, you, 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 you played in like mariachi bands and umpa bands, and you played with Selena. Yeah. You were mostly guitar back then, right? I played key. Keyboards. Oh, you did? Because you're classically yeah. trained as a keyboard player. Yeah. Guitar is just something I play for fun, you know. And it's kind of flowed over under playing on records. The Russian piano teacher you had made it not fun? Yeah. No, no. She, she was great. Jan yeah. Ambuel. Uh-huh. Yeah, she, she taught me for 12 years. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. From, like, fifth grade till I was, like, 21. Wow. Something like that. Wow. That's pretty cool. So, in terms of, um, in terms of, of the different things that you do, what, what part of the process uh, do you do you feel most comfortable with that you just enjoy? I mean, parts of it you do because other people... Yeah. You've made mixing part of the production. You've made mastering part of the production. You don't yeah. think of them as separate processes, but what yeah. part do you enjoy the most? The creating the music part? Yeah. Probably playing guitar solos. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I understand that one. You know, guitar solos. Love doing the 808s and kicks. Mm-hmm. You know, that's like doing the cool stuff, you know. <laughs> that's, that's pretty the stuff that's cool, you know. At this point in our careers, mm-hmm. we have to do what makes us happy. You know? The the um, the the Dirty South sound. Uh, you were rightly credited for for being one of the pioneers of that sound. What was going through your head back then? Was it was it like like a lot of the No Limit guys? They they they, they knew what they didn't want to be, and they became very successful. Um, Filling a niche that that, that that we couldn't get back in the South. The, the, the East Coast was dominant, the West Coast was dominant, but we had our own lifestyle. How, how did you manage to capture that that moment in time so successfully? We were kind of isolated in Houston, actually, from the, from the industry. Like when I first met you and came to the Enterprise, mm-hmm. I had no idea that anybody knew who I was or anything. You know, we were just making those down there, making these records, locked in a, in a basement. You know, mm-hmm. and like. That's why, that's why we kind of got such an original thing going down there, because we were isolated. And we, until I came to California in like 1995 or 6 mm-hmm. and started working here, mm-hmm. like, we had no influences, you know, mm-hmm. just the records that we listened to and stuff. Mm-hmm. So it was just influenced by the lifestyle and, yeah. and really because there were no outside influences, you just created the core producers like Beto, who I started out with. Beto. How's he doing? He's doing good. Scarface. I mean, it really was me, Beto, Scarface. And there's a couple other guys, you know, Joe, mm-hmm. they pretty much pioneered the whole thing that kind of turned into the South Sound. Mm-hmm. The South music now is not the same, though. It's no, it's a different, it was well, a different world. The South music now has slowed down um, bass music. Mm-hmm. You know, the bass music from the, oh, from yeah. the 80s, Tech yeah. Master B and yeah. all that stuff. Yeah. It's just that stuff, instead of being 120, it slowed down to like 70. Plus, it's half time. And uh, my friend Kevin Kendrick, uh, keyboard player with Cameo, and also right. on. Uh, Andre's all Andre's records on Outcast records. Uh, he 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 hit me to the new um, 
Southern Soul sound. There's a whole resurgence in Southern Soul. Mm. <coughs> there's, a, there's, a, um, there's a great track called Mississippi Boy that, that just takes me back to the old days. Herb, mm. Herb, Herb has a little bit of s s South in him. He, he yeah. went to college in Kentucky, That's even though he's from Canada. Are you Canadian? I am. I am, so the Canada, Kentucky thing is a Very whole north. other, yeah, yeah, that's a long story. I wish I could make the noise. <laughs> <laughs> just, just say A and a. boot. My yeah. wife's Canadian. Oh, is that right? From where? Um, Uh-oh. Edit. Calgary. Edit, Calgary. Edit, Will. Calgary. Edit. There you go, Calgary. <laughs> Calgary, got it. She's from a few places. Okay, okay. cool. cool. Um, in terms of, in terms of um, making records, do you... Do you start with a, with an idea? Do you start with a drum beat? Do you turn on a synth and hear a cool sound? Where does where does the spark of creativity tend to start with you? Like on on say some of your more, more recent stuff you've done with Kanye, that sort of stuff. Where does the spark start? A lot of Kanye stuff starts with samples that he has, mm -hmm. or else other producers bring in. Mm -hmm. For him, I'm kind of like the housekeeper mm -hmm. or whatever. I kind of take all the stuff that comes through and just make it all good enough to make the cut. Mm -hmm. <laughs> On, 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 on the work you do, uh, or previous work, where does, where does your creativity start? I pick up an instrument and just start playing. The sound will just, you know, it'll make me play something. Mm -hmm. Like, remember I used to always have a Wurlitzer? Yeah. A Wurlitzer was my thing, like on the Scarface records. I'd just sit down and just... I love a Wurlitzer. You know, it just makes you play stuff. And, yeah. Or like a great P bass or a yeah. great Strat, you know? Yeah. A buddy of mine, Dean Daughtry, was it great Wurlitzer player. He played a lot of records, but he also was a band called the Atlanta Rhythm Section. Well, that's yeah. pretty cool. And and are you still using an external drum machine, or are you using Pro Tools for the drums and and, and, and going to like an MP outside of Pro Tools? A little bit of everything. Like we use the, I use the 2000 or 3000. Mm -hmm. Use that so we can like overload the inputs, you know, make stuff distort cool. Mm -hmm. The 2000 has as good a feel as the 3, yeah. you think? Yeah, I, don't, I prefer the 3 really, but but the 2000 loads waves and you can use SD cards and stuff. Yeah. It's just a lot more into the future. Yeah. 3000. I find threes now. <laughs> 3000. I, mean, I got two sitting in my closet I need to put in the shop. Oh, wow. Two of them before I modified. They so if you want to help my buddy Mike out, just offer a, some free repair on his 3000s there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm curious about the creative process because um, it's something my whole life I've tried to figure out why we do certain things, you know, guys like you and I, I'm not, I'm not saying I'm in the same league as you creatively, but sometimes I have a spark and I try to create an atmosphere that's going to create it again and once it's gone, it's gone, you know, like, like you and I are notorious for working around the clock because of that. Once, once the idea comes, there's no, no law saying it's going to come back, you know. Yeah, you got to ride it till it's over. Mm -hmm. And, and how do guys mix on pot? I never figured that one out. How do guys mix off pot? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm trying to figure out. I've been trying to figure that out for years. How do you do make your stuff sound so good and be sober? No. <laughs> I don't know. When I tried it a few times, like I, I thought I was killing the world. I was, I was like, I was writing nasty letters of Bruce Wadeen telling him to get out the business. Here comes the new guy, and heard it the next day, and I was so embarrassed. It was, it was a. Uh, uh, I was a walking drug commercial the next day. Mm. Do not do this stuff. That comes from lots of practice. <laughs> <laughs> Are you ready for the footnote, Herb? That we do not, the, 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 the owners of This Weekend Network do not, what was that disclaimer? Do not endorse or condone any. Uh, not their opinion. They're not expressing it's not their opinion. opinion of the network. <laughs> right. Uh, no, I mean, I don't endorse the use of marijuana. Just, just for medical use only. That's true. That's true. I noticed your eyesight has improved, though. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, if if somebody put a gun up to your head and said, "Mike, um, you can only do one. You can only be Kanye's music director. You can only be his mastering engineer, his engineer, his writer, or his co-producer. What would you choose?" Writer. Yeah, I, I knew that. I knew that. I knew that about you. Writer. And second, I guess producer, you know, player. Yeah. You know. But 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 the way you work, they're all connected because yeah. if you can't engineer what you write, it's not going to sound the same way. And if you exactly. can't mix what you engineer, it's not going to sound right. So it all goes back to the creative part of the writing process. Everything you're doing, and, and, and when when you master your own work, are you 
cognizant of the loudness wars, or are you just say yeah. screw it? Yeah, I mean, I have a certain level that I hit, and I stay there. Like, I won't go beyond that now. So are, you using, are you using Pro Tools to master? Yeah, Pro Tools and... Um, yeah, it's mostly Pro Tools. Uh -huh. I'm pretty much out of the hardware business now. Oh, really? Yeah. That's, that's a shot. It's all in the box. I make the SP stuff, actually, that's what I use. Oh, wow. The ML4000, it's like my favorite. I love the ML4000. Just smack down on stuff, put a brick wall after it, and... Mm -hmm. Turn up so you like it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, the, we had the owner on the other day, and uh, what a well-run company. He's yeah. very conscientious guys. Yeah, yeah, they hooked me up good. They're, they're cool. Yeah, they're cool guys. I, 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 I kind of thought you were using four thousand, but I, it just never dawned on me. Yeah, that I, have you been, I, I used that on a Scarface album like two or three albums ago because uh -huh. I was in a hurry. Uh -huh. And, you know, I mean, I didn't want to, mm -hmm. I didn't want to have take all the rent, the time to print the stuff real time. So I wanted to try something I could render with, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. You know, on um, on uh, beautiful, dark, twisted, fantastic. Boy, did I leave? Did I leave some kind of adjective out? Uh, how many songs did you do on that record? You did like nine, didn't you? I think I co-produced or additional produced on eight or nine, and played on all, you know, played on those mm -hmm. and mixed them. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Andrew Dawson came in, and you know he tweaked a few things on the mixes here and there. Mm -hmm. Is that is that a technique you use where you where you you might go to a cat like Andrew j just? Yeah, Andrew obviously and Kanye is is. Well, there's three of us that engineer for him. We're four now, Andrew, Anthony, and me. We like we all mix graduation together, mm -hmm. kind of hand stuff. We hand stuff around okay. just till it till it passes Kanye's approval. Uh -huh. Then we have a new guy Noah Goldstein. He's he hadn't mixed anything yet, but he, he tracks all the vocals and stuff now. Yeah, early on in, in Kanye's career, I mixed a couple of things for him. I was I was impressed. He's one of us. He really is. He's, really yeah. is one of us. He's he's more he's than an artist. Guy. More he's, than a yeah. yeah. He's pretty special. He uh, he he definitely um, brings something to the to the party in terms of the creative process. I mean, he's, yeah, that's why I was stuck working with him so long. It's like it never gets dull, you know. Yeah, it's always it's always a something pioneering going on uh-huh you know. and uh did did you ever did you ever uh, follow up on our buddy bob brown did you ever hear anything about bob i called devin the dude like he's the only person i know that really keeps up with him he said he's been trying to get in touch with him for about a year uh -huh. so i don't know yeah uh -huh. it'd be nice to hear from him if anybody knows where bob brown is have him yeah let us know we want we yeah. want our friend bob brown good cat he, he, he worked yeah. on some scarface records mm -hmm. and, a, and, a, and a lot of other records He's like um, one of White Clef's go-to guys for a while. Yeah. I know you did some stuff with Tupac. How was that? Oh, that was cool. Yeah. Did that in your room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was my famous room, Studio C at the Enterprise, where I did yeah. all the Mary Jane, Smile, and Dave came in and jacked my room. No, I didn't no, jack his room. <laughs> I was going to say, before he took your room, no. he went off on vacation, he came back, and then the Mike, door Mike, changed. Mike made the mistake of going home for Christmas. Nobody goes home for Christmas. <laughs> yeah, what was, what was I thinking? There's, there's <laughs> no going home for holidays. I was making too much money back then, so I took the holiday off. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I wish you'd have left some in that room. Yeah, we really. did good, though, didn't we, Herb? We did all right. You probably found enough weed in the console to roll... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know who that was, but I'm not at liberty to say. Yeah. Plus, there was one engineer. Oh. There, was one engineer. <laughs> there was one engineer, Herb. After he'd used my room, like, if I'd take a day off, I couldn't work. There was so much food spilled in the console. Mm, 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 mm. I, used to, I used to have a reputation. I, I can't. Oh. I, uh, I, uh, <laughs> uh, could you read my lips? <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, uh, if you can read my lips, he's, he's actually one of my favorite mixers of all time. But I used to do this thing where I would I would I, I would I would buy Slurpees. Remember, I'd buy Slurpees, but I liked them when they got a little yeah, like this. Yeah, I liked them when they got like that. So yeah. I'd set my Slurpee on the part of the console that had the most heat, <laughs> and it would melt quicker. Remember that? So if you went into my room, you'd see like little sweat rings from where I was eating my Slurpees on a two million dollar console. <laughs> Uh, yeah, those are they're good slurpy heaters. They're good for putting your laptop on now too. Yeah. SSLs. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> right. <laughs> you you're you're essentially in the box, right? Yeah. Like ninety percent probably. We're all in the box now. We we have we don't work in studios anymore because of the, the leak factor. Yeah, yeah. We haven't had we haven't had a record leak since we quit working in studios. 
Wow. You know, after Dark Twisted, we just quit. We don't send anything on emails, FTPs. We don't send anything over the internet. We'll we'll put somebody on a plane with a hard drive before we we'll even send it one MP3 somewhere. Right. We, wow. just, we just don't want anything. I remember I was talking to you, uh, I guess about a year ago, maybe. I don't know. It seems a while back, and you had like a whole floor at a hotel in New York that you were using as a yeah. studio. It was awesome. <laughs> really? Yeah. How many different Pro Tools rigs did you have? I had four and a couple of Logic rigs floating around. It was awesome. We had, That's I had a giant room, you know, nice suite. Mm. The county had a room, I have a room. We had a keyboard room. And we had a bunch of guys from Africa, producers, we had them in a room. Then we had other producers come in, we had a vocal room down the hall. Then we had rooms around that on top and bottom to make a buffer. Because <laughs> like, we, had, we had two 18s and, and like these huge speakers in there. You know? we had, Are you serious? We had like Tenoys, you know, crossed over with 18 subs and, mm. in each wow. room. I started a rental company. I've got, anybody needs to rent gear, I've got gear. Absolutely. <laughs> go, ahead and, go ahead and tell us your address where we can uh, reach you. Uh, Mike Dean at deanslist.net. Just oh, okay. sit me up there. You've been using that Dean's List thing for like 20 years, Mike. Yeah, that's great. And Dean's List this, Dean's List that. That's a great. That's a great name. What What's your like like not not with necessarily with Conway, but when you think, okay, I, I'm going to sit down and create something. What's your go-to keyboard? Um, a lot of times Logic, really. Mm -hmm. I use Logic quite a bit. The the keyboard, the the soft sense in yeah, Logic. Yeah, the soft sense, and I actually play on just play on the Mac keys a lot when I'm writing. The, the 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 keyboard for the computer? Yeah, I can like play on that like fluently. Like, Are you serious? Just, like I'm playing a keyboard. Hey, bring me a keyboard in here. I want to check this out. I'm not believing this, guys. Yeah, it's actually it's pretty cool. Like I do, I do my string scoring and stuff. I just sit there and play it on the keypad. Mm. That's hard to do. Yeah, it's cool. It's, That's pretty it's, neat. It's cool to show off. You're making me feel like so inadequate on so many levels. Well, yeah, I like the Korg Triton, just the old school. Uh huh. You know, just for a basic. Beat up keyboard, you know. Okay. We love Moogs, you know. Use a lot of Moogs. So. Uh -huh. And then, and then you still, do, but you're still the when you when it gets time to the drums, you still you still will go to a two thousand or a yeah. three thousand. Yeah. That's your first choice. Uh, it's like fifty fifty now, with using like battery or Logic, machine or ESX twenty four. Uh -huh. You know, just with any sampler, you know. Mm -hmm. Still use the SR ten. Oh really? Yeah, it's I, got a sound to it. I love that. Uh, yeah. Didn't Babyface used to use that a lot, didn't he? Yeah, it's like Kanye's main thing, you know. Oh really? I talk about that as well now, I think. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't really use that. Yeah, it's just for show. And um, um, is there <clears throat> are there any records you're currently working on now besides Kanye that uh, that you're proud of that you want people to check out? Something yeah. that's already out. Well, that's already out, and not really. Is there something? Not lately. Um, working on a new Kanye Jay Z album right now. Watch the Throne. Oh, really? Yeah, it's almost done. We're going out of town to record right after the show. Oh, can we're Can you talk about it, or is that something that that we have to wait? Not really yet. Yeah. Okay, we'll it's, wait on that one. I got like four or five co-produced strikes on there. Wow. I'm mixing the whole record supposedly. Wow. Yeah. We had somebody in Paris. Oh, well, never mind. <laughs> we had somebody try to mix the stuff and it didn't work out. Would you, uh, if if I, uh, we're going to talk a little later on in the show. We're going to get some specific uh, plugins and things like that and during the batter's box. You're going to stick around for batter's box. Have we got, have we got time for that? Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. What we're going to do is go to the corner office. Drew, you, uh, you tuned up there. So we're running on. corner office now. And you guys uh, got everybody really inspired with all the marijuana talk, right? <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> but uh, I see the focus of the show is yeah, shifted. Yeah, yeah, what was the prop? Prop bit. what? Prop nineteen or what was the what was the pot prop? I can't remember. Well, well, like, the legalized pot. <laughs> well, I forgot. You know what's wrong when it didn't pass because all the pie has forgot to go vote. I know I got something to do today. <laughs> I'm like, man, if these guys would have just like tied a string around their finger before they smoked that last joint. That's yeah. Like, that's <laughs> funny. What you got, Drew? Okay, I got a uh, good question right here. So the scroll works from Richard Gass. It says. Drew, what was the first piece of gear Dave and Mike bought aside from Pro Tools that drastically changed the quality of their mixes? Oh, so God, what a great guys. question, Richard. 
Yeah, I was reading something the, else. The first the piece of gear that you got that you felt your mixes finally, because of that gear, went to a pro level. Does this have to be something we bought or something that we... Bought, attained, whatever is best. For me, it was an SSL. <laughs> SSL, yeah. Back then, that was like, yeah, it was oh, the end-all, be-all, you know? Yeah. You had to have an SSL. Or yeah. You were just like, not serious. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, I, I, I learned on a... On a on a smaller board, and the first time I saw an SSL, it scared me. I was like, I can't do this. Ooh. This is. I was uh, I was working with Cameo, and we were supposed to go to a studio named Doppler, and I I was like, Oh, well, Doppler! I was freaking out. I just don't know what to do. It's too many knobs. Because mm. nothing, Drew. Good question, Rick. <laughs> uh, vocal chains. People are really blowing up the vocal chains for uh, you, Mike. Uh, curious of anything you can give away. You know, hang hang on, because we're gonna. We're they can gonna look on gear sluts. I'll post it over there a million oh, times. Okay. Yeah, and also too, uh, <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna we're, Mike's gonna do a batter's box with us about that. Sweet, sweet. Yeah, I mean, I love ten seventy threes. You know, it's like my favorite go to. Yeah. Also, um, if you had this is like a starting out kind of question, like for people that are starting out now, if you had a decent room, uh, would you put an HD rig in with tons of plugins, or would you go with analog gear and try and start out that way? Hmm. He just answered that. He had a whole three floors in a hotel full of <laughs> full of digital gear. Yeah, like okay, just so I mean, yeah. I mean, it's got to be a, it's got to be a hybrid of both. Though. I mean, you need yeah. you've got to have a good front end to get into it. You know, yeah. Good well, who, 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 who said that question? Uh, that was Richard. Richard Gas. Oh, Richard. Is anybody else yeah. on the chat room besides Richard? Yeah. <laughs> Hey, Richard, uh, all kidding aside, my friend. Um, oh, what was the base chain of Mary Jane? I can talk about that. There you go. Use, uh, use all the cards in the, in the deck. Uh, we all use, um, the, try to use what we feel is, is, gives us what we want to hear, whether it be digital or analog. And right now, uh, the gap between the two is insignificant, so you can make a lot of good decisions, and you can make you can make some great records with a couple of grand at home. You really can. It's, it, if you're not, it's your taste. It's not your gear. Uh, Little B is a perfect example. Little B, who's the other guy you talked about? Oh yeah, ate the roach in his video. Yeah, uh, our, uh, Drew's buddies, uh, Frank Ocean and uh, Tyler, uh, the creator. Yeah, those Tyler, guys. Yeah. I mean, they, they're killing it with USB mics and laptops. You know. Great mm -hmm. stuff. Novocaine is my favorite song right now. I love that song. <laughs> swag. It's swag. It'll be swag. Swag. Yeah. Swag. Rare swag. Um, okay, I got a tech question. Do we really need analog summing mixers to get a wide, clear sound image, or everything can be done in the box from Bun Me 102? Pretty much. Oh, I think analog actually closes in the sound image a little bit. It can. I, I found that like on Scarface Untouchable album. I was upstairs on the Need Capricorn, remember? Yeah, I mixed Need everything all digital mm -hmm. from D88s mm -hmm. <laughs> through the Need Capricorn. Then we printed it to half inch, and I went with the digital master because the half inch like closed in like 15 percent of my mm -hmm. stereo field. Who who what, who said that question? Was that Richard again? No, uh, <laughs> Bun Me 102. Bug Me 102. Bun like B U N M I 102. Uh, Bun Me. Uh, quick 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 answer. Um, the problem that a lot of people have is they bring an analog set of taste and skills to the digital world. Um, on, on Facebook this week I said uh, that Ed C. taught me the, the redder the better, but that's not true in the digital world. It is true in the analog world. So if you do your gain structure in the digital world like you do the analog world, it's not going to produce the same results. So work with your gain structure, keep, keep things like everybody criticizes me or, or points out that every meter on my Pro Tools rig is in the red, but that's not that. Those are those are peaks. Those aren't RMS averages. So control, control your gain structure. Listen, listen in headphones, and you can get them just as wide in the box now. Particularly with Pro Tools 9, it's it's just a whole different beast. <coughs> yeah, with the, what's it called? The pan depth and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I was playing with that. Yeah, yeah. Apple II, you can get to that. Can you um, talk about Mary J's uh, bass, bass chain? Mike? Yeah, it didn't have a bass in it. It had an 808. And it went through it was a the, tuned 808. It was a I think it went through a, um, just a pull tech, you know, whatever it's called, EQP1A. EQP1A, yeah. To, uh, to from an SSL, we used that 4000 at 96 channel, so it went, I mixed that on. Wow. I think, I think actually that came from a 24 track, too. 
So I had a 3348 and a 24 track running on this song. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, and the bass line, the actual bass sound, is the, the little organ bass sound on the um, Arp Omni too. Are you serious? Burr, burr, the yeah. little, little piano sounding bass. That's what I the didn't bass. I that. Yeah, it's the all Arp Omni two clavinet, wordless her. It's all you, everything's real on there. Do you do you EQ your 808s as a tendency, or you just turn yeah. them louder? Yeah, I just put it on 60 hertz and turn it up to 10. It's like my standard. <laughs> Any compression on those? No, nah, never compress drums at all. Uh, uh, not not as a singular thing, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I'll compress groups of drums. Yeah. Or I'll compress the main, you know, the main mix. Okay. You know, the two mix. But. Remind me, that'll be, a, that'll be a, a batter's box question. Cool. Drums, we'll see what he says. I'm going to find, I'm, uh, I'm going to write this one down. Cool. Me, and Dave, me and Dave, we used to share drum sounds back in the 90s. Dave would give me like these great clear hi-hats and stuff, I'd give him kicks and stuff. That's true. I had like that. Also, too, you know, we, we weren't, like, you'd come in my room and you'd say, I'd ask you, what do you think about this? And you'd say, well, this is good, this is good, but this ain't, this ain't happening, Dave. Do this, do this. Yeah, I mean, same with you. Yeah, like, I remember you were mixing a, a song, I won't say whose it was, but it was just... You can a, say. No, it was oh. just a load of crap. It was oh. like shit. <laughs> oh, and, you can't say. And I sat in the room with you for, like, an hour and watched you just turn it into a hit, into a Grammy Award winning... Oh, Single. thanks, man. I've seen you do yeah. the same thing. I, like I said, yeah. um, we... your records just, they, I don't know how you do it, and I wish we had, you, you got to come back when you get through with the Kanye tour, because uh, I want to know how you, 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 you straddle a fence that nobody else can straddle. You can get the credibility from the hip-hop world and the polish from the uh, pop world and make them both credible and not have your clients bitch that it's too much of either one. It's just a gift you have. Why don't, we, um, why don't we throw some questions at him in the batter's box? Let's go rapid fire. Okay. It might not be real rapid. <coughs> well, I'll, he will be. <laughs> yeah. He will be. He won't be. <laughs> I might not be. Because um, um, I prepared some Karen Carpenter questions for the batter's box, so it might be kind of weird today. Okay. So what we're going to do is is... For those of you that are new to this segment, we've only run, been running this segment about four weeks. We're going to, it's kind of a stream of consciousness, word association thing. I'm going to say a, I'm gonna say a word, and you just tell me the first thing that pops into your mind, Mike. Uh, keyboards. Crewmore Orchestrator. Yeah. Crewmore, Crewmore Orchestrator? Yeah. Uh, vocals. Uh, 1073. That's your go-to mic pre-1073. Yeah. Um, clean, clean guitar sounds. Um, I'm sorry. Um, Strat, Tele, compress it with an 1176. Twin, Fender Twin. Fender Twin? Yeah. Okay, 808s again. 808s, Pultex. Pultex. Uh, yeah. Give me one, Drew. Um, percussion? Overheads? 808. Um, loops? Suck. <laughs> really? Yeah, I make my own loops, yeah. Oh, okay. Do you loops. really? Yeah. Man, uh, uh, I don't really use that much, like, samples and stuff. Okay. I've never sampled. Like, all the records that I've, that I've produced myself, I've never sampled. Mm. You know, all the Kanye stuff, of course, has samples. But yeah. I don't produce myself, and I like to make publishing. Yeah, I definitely. like to give my money away. Uh, definitely. That's, that's pretty unique. So, uh, when you make your own loops, what, what's your go-to process? It's, like, different every time. Yeah. yeah. I like to use the ASR a lot. And just like sample stuff into that. There's groups and they put like the cheesy effects from there on there. Mm -hmm. So we done a lot of the old Scarface and Ghetto Boy stuff. We'd make a little drum loop and sample in the dr in, like with a ton of reverb on it to put it in the back of the mix and gives it the ambience like it's something real. Mm. Oh, yeah. that's pretty cool. Um, and um, Real quick, let, let, let's do the same thing, but let's do it with just strictly EQs, like your your go-to EQ, like in the box or an, an external EQ. Yeah. And if it's in the box, just just tell me to plug in keyboards. Um, E5, E6, I mean. E6, yeah, I like that one too. Uh, vocals. E6. Um, well, like 1073, really. You know, I like I like the, the, the EQ muscle. part too. Yeah, the, really the EQ part is what I like. The, I just love the high end and the low end on those. Oh, okay. I like it, the Universal Audio ones. I use that a lot. Oh, you do? Yeah. Yeah, I'm hearing good things about those. All right, man. I think, 
I think we kind of picked his brain. Is there anything I left out, Herb? No, I think you pretty much got it. You were going to ask about his choice of V-neck T-shirts, but I, I didn't. It's too important to go there. Well, as we found out, he's, he's, he's pretty much wearing Kanye's leftovers these days. <laughs> I oh, thought he was going to give you those sunglasses, but he didn't offer yeah, her. Was, yeah, they had to get me cool. out of the, the Walmart shorts and the <laughs> T-shirts. <laughs> Thanks for coming, man. Yeah, thanks for having Absolute me. Absolute pleasure. Yeah. I've been watching since you guys started. Cool, oh, man. I really like your segments where you where you tell all your secrets. Oh. I sit in there, I watch that. That's the part I really watch. Like, oh, thanks. Dave's, yeah. Dave's secrets. Oh, shit. That's right. the, oh, thanks for the L1 tip. That was like, changed my, changed my world. Oh, that's good. That's another segment. It's like Dave's it's, secrets. It's thanks like for a, the... It's like a plug-in that thinks it's just a crap. Like, you know, the, Thanks for the, the thanks for the common record. I forgot to mention that. That's another record that that I stole a lot of your ideas from. Oh, that one sounds good. That really. That's does. all in the box on Pro Tools Five. Five. Yeah. Wow. I, I just quit using Pro Tools Five in 2007. I, just got, I didn't get AC rig till 2007. I mixed all that shit in the box on Pro Tools Five. Wow. That's amazing. that's that's an accomplishment. Herb. Say the least. Cause I, I didn't want to. <laughs> never mind. <laughs> you remember how the plugins used to be back then? Oh yeah. Yeah, I remember. I had to buy them all now. Well, Mike, uh, guys, I, I wish Mike could stick around forever. As you can tell, he's a good friend. I, 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 he brings back great memories. He's so busy, we don't get to spend a lot of time together. But um, I, I, I'm sure you learned something. Mike, can you come back like in a month or two when the dust settles from the tour? Yeah, rehearsal for about a week here next month. Oh, okay. Like that. Oh, okay. Cool. Cool. Well, we can always Skype you in, too. Are you still living yeah. in Texas, or are you living yeah, out here now? Yeah, in Houston. Okay. Yeah. Man, thank you so much. And uh, Mike's going to split. He's actually going to go uh, go to rehearsal and work with uh, with the band, getting ready for a big show. Can I say the show? Yeah, Coachella. They're, they're yeah. playing Coachella, yeah. and uh, you'll see Mike on stage playing guitar, MD in the show. Um, Co MD. Me and Jeff Basker are both. Right. We're both. He was. He was the old music director. We, we're both his producers. So we're. Oh, cool. It's kind of cool because the record. It's going to sound. It sounds just like the records because. We made the records, so oh, that's cool. It's like we can both play like two keyboard parts a piece fluently and like just kill stuff. You guys are closing the show too, right? Yeah. Didn't yeah. you say you just got back from uh, South America? Yeah, I was played in Chile, Lollapalooza. Lollapalooza. How'd that? Was that kind of neat? It's cool. Sixty thousand people. Wow. <laughs> oh wow. Yeah. No, no, they went. <laughs> that's, the, that's the Spanish accent. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, unless it's unless it's Argentina, they're Portuguese. They go. Quack. Ah, it's a little that, different accent. That's information we need. I got a Man, funny I, story for you after we get off. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> well, are we ready for Enter the Lair? Let's roll. Let's roll it. Okay, welcome back. Uh, last week and the week before, we were showing you how we remove things from the middle in order to create width and depth. I've got uh, four more little techniques for you today, and that, that'll be 12 total. If you can't widen something, or if you can't clear the middle out with one of these 12, um, there's other shows on the network you might want to check out. Um, no, I'm not going to say that. Anyway, I love my audience. Um, the guitar we were working with last week, uh, th th this one right here, it's a mono guitar. Okay, now what I've done is I've duplicated it. So this is the same guitar. Right? Okay, let's, let's get them equal level. Okay, now let's pan one left and one right. Dave, it sounds the same. All right, hold on, hold on. Check this out. Okay. Now on this little bad boy, we're gonna take off and roll off everything below 680. Now on this bad boy, we're going to do the opposite. We're going to roll off everything below around 700. Okay, now watch what that does together. Without it. With it. Pretty cool. And, and experiment with this. Oh, I like that right there. What's that? It's about where I was before. 
But move these, move these around. Move this one around, move this around. And, uh, and here again, you're going to want to combine this with other techniques. You might combine this with center. You might combine this with um, isotope or whatever. It's not an either or. You can try different techniques. And because I'm showing pianos, guitars, strings, and synths, that doesn't mean this, this technique is only for guitars. It's a darn good one for guitars, as you can see. But it can be for, it can, you can use it for anything. And this is going to help us have options in terms of what we put in the middle. Remember, there's three sacred spots in the mix. The most sacred spot is the middle. And then the other two are the, the left and right, hard left and right. Now, you, you, you can do a pretty doggone good mix with a switch that just selects whether you want something in the middle, on the left, or on the right. The area in between... Uh, is is a little hard to hear, but if you use some of these techniques that we're that we're showing you now, they can also be used to pan. It's not just to clear out the middle, but the Haas effect can be used to place stuff microscopically, incrementally. And I painted myself in a corner with that sentence, but anyway, you guys are smarter than I am. You can figure that out. Okay, so so now we're going to go to um um uh. A direct. I've talked about the house effect for a while. Now we're going to go to uh, um, an exact, 100% uh, example of the house effect. Okay. Here's our two. Here's our our two mono versions of the same guitar. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this delay. Now, the Haas effect, uh, don't hold me to these numbers, you guys. Sometimes you put my feet to the fire, and I'm not that bright to be, uh, to be like uh, looking for little tiny details. But in my mind, I tend to think of the Haas effect as anywhere from a, a microsecond or a millisecond or two up to about 30, 35, somewhere in there. Some definitions take it up to 50. And the concept behind that is that uh, if you've got something coming out of both speakers at the same volume, then your ear interprets that as coming out from the middle. And it's not coming out from the middle. It's coming out from this speaker and this speaker. But there's the perception that it's coming out the middle. So panning is nothing more than the amount of volume volume you send to each speaker. Think about that because that's critical to, to some of the things we're going to do down the road. So what we're going to do is the ear, according to Mr. Haas, can discern, we'll read that because I, I don't want to butcher the definition, but basically what we're doing, we're, we're implementing the concept that something still is perceived is coming from the middle even though we're delaying one side and that, that that gives it a widening effect. Watch this. Did you hear that? Without it? With it? Now let's, let's, let's make it less. It's still sounding like almost one source until we get up. Now that's clearly a delay. But if you if you look at these numbers down in here, it still sounds like it's coming from the middle, but watch this. Dave, what about mono? Nothing went away. That's the beauty of the Haas effect. Now if I was a TV director, would I worry about black and white? No. If you got a black and white TV, you shouldn't be watching my TV show. I think we're at the point now where I can declare on this week's ITL of Pensada's Place, Mono is dead. Okay, tell all your friends, Mono's dead. Don't worry about Mono. Now, there are uses for, for checking things in Mono. We'll, we'll, we'll do something about that. But for all practical purposes, would you rather sell 
less records, and please the three guys that still listen to mono or sell more records. Everybody's listening to headphones now, and you're still working in mono? Come on, man. Get with the program. All right. Now, uh, earlier in an earlier episode or show, I told you that sometimes stereo is not stereo. This particular string track happens to be fairly stereo, so I, I didn't pick the best source for an example, but this is still pretty dramatic. A lot of times, your stereo synth part is actually just a mono that's just chorus to one side. So let's check out the synth part, string part. Okay, fairly stereo, not too bad. All right, now let's do this. I'm going to pan this a little bit this way. Okay, now I'm going to send it to this delay. Study these. These are pretty, these are pretty interesting numbers. They're not random. Okay. Now we've really got a nice, nice clear out in the middle, and we're more stereo than before. Go back and check the before, and then, and then come back and check this. Well, you know what? I can do it for you real quick here. Are you ready? One last one, so hang with me now. All right, guys, this one is a little subtle, and to be honest with you, I wanted to have four things in this episode, so I'm, I'm stretching it on this one. <laughs> so if you call me on it, you're right. But I, I, do, I do use this, and um, there's some, there's some big-time engineers that I hear are using this technique. They might, they might implement it with a couple of PCM42s or something like that. I, I happen to like this setting. Um, so... Here we go. This is this is my stereo guitar. Okay. Now I'm going to I'm going to shift one side 40 41 samples, not very much. Okay. Now I'm going to bring in Echo Boy. Turn this up a little bit, guys. Anyway, you can see I'm, I don't want to take time to adjust the volumes exactly, but you hear what it's doing. 41 samples you might use. Um, now this will give you some, some, some mono compatibility issues because uh, it's very tight. So uh, those of you that, that understand that there's 41,000 samples happening per second, 41 samples, you can do the math, send it to me in an email and tell me how, m how much time it is. It's pretty short. But um, check, this, check this setting out, a 32nd note, a 16th note. Our beats 120 beats per minute, and there you go. All right, guys, thanks for hanging with me. Uh, I had a lot of fun explaining this stuff to you, sharing it with you, and the, and then uh, in in coming weeks we're going to start using these techniques to 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 help expand our mixes and widen our mixes and allow us to create that perception that you can kind of reach in the mix and pick out things because now we've got techniques to clear out the middle, but at the same time expand the sides. Thanks.